Hello, this is The Art of Thinking Smart. My name is Michael North, and I'm the host, uh, working with David Chang for this series over the past several months. And we talk to some of the leaders of Hawaii's business and social, cultural, and political communities about what makes them successful. So we have today a very successful young man who works in the venture capital field, which is fast growing. He's with a group called Blue Startups, which is just around the corner from the Think Tech Studios here in downtown Honolulu. His name is Casey Lau, and he is something called an entrepreneur in residence, which is a kind of a very fancy sounding term. You know, you've heard the term artist in residence, so you can be an artist in residence at a, at a, at a big uh, studio or at a big uh, opera company or something. But uh, Casey, what, what is an entrepreneur in residence? Can you explain to me that fancy term? Well, yeah, it is a very fancy term, but it's basically I'm an in-house mentor, basically what it is. I have had experience running my own business, and I'm now applying that knowledge to a cohort of startups here in Hawaii. So when, what is mentor what in this context? So mentor, I guess, is somebody who, oh, it's, it's the typical t meaning of the word mentor, like, um, like Yoda might be a mentor. Who are you mentoring? I'm mentoring the teams that are inside the cohort. So I've done startups stuff for like, wow, quite a long time now. So the teams are companies? Yeah, the teams are companies. Okay. They're people at an early stage in their lifespan of building a business. Okay. And they come to Hawaii to join Blue Startups, which is a uh, three-month program to help them kickstart their business faster. So a cohort is a group of companies. Correct, correct. And right? in this that, cohort, yeah. That's an old Latin term for exactly. soldiers who are marching together. Exactly, right? exactly. We want to make it sound really official. Are really the fancy companies titles. interconnected? Are they related or no, are they working seven, in yeah. individual? No, they're seven in this cohort, which is number nine. They are seven individual teams in different verticals, vertical industries. And so these are the ones that we think we can help the best here in Hawaii to expand globally whether it be in the U.S. mainland or out in Asia. So there's nine cohorts. I think there's two a year, right? That's right, yeah. So we've so been this for a while is now. four and a half, nearly five yeah, years. Exactly. This has been going. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. It's quite exciting. And I find that in Hawaii, it's a very dynamic space for this kind of accelerator to happen, right? First yeah. of all, it's very easy for people to come to Hawaii because it's a great place. It's and central. I, I also, and it's central between east and west. I think yeah. that's the main point because people are doing business now more and more often with Asia. And if you're from the mainland US, it's a great place to come to kind of get ready for Asia. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Asia, Asian people here, Asian culture, Asian food. I find it very homely when I come from Hong Kong to come here. It seems very easy to blend in. Right. And then vice versa, for Japanese and Chinese to come to America. Actually, I think Hawaii is a good place to get ready, acclimated to the US customs before you're going into the mainland, maybe San Francisco, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm or New York, whatever. So I think that is a very exciting space to and be in. And part of the glue that makes Blue Startups really work is the fact that Hank Rogers and his wife started this company yes. five years ago. Hank is the original genius behind Tetris. Yes, yes. That amazing yeah. thumb-breaking game, yeah, game yeah. that millions of people have played. Yeah. And he's done many other things yeah. in addition, but that's the thing that he made his bones with. Yeah, yeah. And he's contributed a small amount of his vast fortune yeah. to financing blue startups. And those who win to get into the into a cohort yeah. actually receive a small amount of expenses and capital Correct. in addition to the valuable mentoring Correct. that they get from Correct. you and him and yeah. others, right? Correct. Exactly. So I think that um, any business nowadays needs a little bit of early stage capital as well as this mentorship program, yeah. which includes a lot of professionals from Hawaii, from the mainland, from Asia, that will help them in different yeah. aspects, right? So that's building a team. That's doing all the investment paperwork. That's also doing marketing, design, pitching, talking mm. to investors. It's all these things that are very, very essential for startups today to get into the market who are maybe they, more young. Do they get a desk there to work They get out a desk, yeah, they get a desk uh, there. So. We got a ping pong table, we got the whole thing set up. Uh, okay. um, but I think it's, it's about, uh, 
every day it's like a it's like a school it's like a yeah. boot camp every day we got a lot of mentors a lot of sessions coming in and then they have to basically at nighttime they're working on the so products let's get concrete okay yeah. a boot camp yeah who are who are you boot camping today when you're finished here yeah. you're probably going to be seeing a company give yeah. us a real world example of who you're mentoring okay so the, the teams that are coming in maybe they're just about to launch a product or they've already launched a product but it's very early stage now the next thing is they're looking for customers how to find customers to come and buy what they're selling so we help them in this digital era how to get those customers to come to their website, right? Website or app or whatever it is. And, we, and also how to raise money. So once the customers come in, they get something we call traction. It's very important, right? A lot of that means users. Could mm. be 10, could be 20, could be 100, could be thousands. Mm. And then we take them to San Francisco for a demo day where we put them in front of major investors who invest in companies like Facebook and Google. Oh, the tough to, guys yeah, the in tough San guys. Francisco. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we hope to prepare them up for that level hmm. to then, then bring them into the main market there. And then the ones that are successful there, I will then help take it back to Asia and hopefully integrate them into the Asian marketplace. And you bring people from Asia here? That's right. Companies that's the point. Yeah. and investors. Exactly. exactly. And annually, you have this Fandango that's called East Meets West. Yes, yes. East Meets so West. So yeah. there was one this past January you helped to organize. Yeah, it, it's right? the, third, the third annual one. And yeah. I think it's very successful. So what we do is we bring a lot of um, investor speakers from either the mainland or from Asia to come here and kind of discuss the what's going on both sides right. and so it was really exciting because one of the guys we I brought in from um, San Francisco who works for a company called AngelList which is like a Angel big, a big yes. uh, investment uh, company online mm. um, and there the, the guy came here he's like this is great because he heard a lot from the Asian investors yeah. what's happening in China what's happening in Japan what's happening in Hong Kong in terms of investment in startups which he doesn't have access to as much being in you know Bay Area right yeah. so that's the idea then also accessing all the local startups can see what's happening here and then people want to come in this what's going on. So I think it's a really good show. It's a cozy show so people can really network and meet each other mm. uh, as opposed to like bigger shows. I think it's a uh, very good and we're going to be doing it again uh, next next year in February. So folks want to go to bluestartups.com and tune into all of this and there's newsletters and contacts yeah. and if you want to get be considered for the next cohort because there's That's a right. cohort is never more than six months away. Correct, correct. Then the opportunities are there. And we'd love to have people who are interested in what we're doing to come out to our demo day here in Honolulu uh -huh. on July the 7th. So we'll be having that at the Sullivan Conference Center at the University, um, and that will be all seven teams, plus we'll have some guest speakers fly in to talk about the start ecosystems, where they're from, and to kind of, you know, show off the, the, the cohort. I went to one of those demo days, yes. and you force them to give like a three-minute pitch, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to put your entire who you are, what you're doing, your in business minutes, plan, yeah. and why you're going to take over the world. Exactly. You have to do it in three minutes, yeah. and at the end of the three minutes, yeah. You're off. That's right. Exactly. Wow, that's so, brutal. And so what that is, is basically, because you know, the investors as well, they're looking at these things, and they listen to these pitches quite a f frequently, so they can get the idea. So basically, not only do you have to sell your business idea, you have to sell yourself. Yeah. How much does that person look like they're going to be able to take a company from zero dollars mm. to a billion dollars? So if you income. can't sell yourself in three minutes, you can't sell yourself at all. It's tough, yeah, it's, exactly, yeah. it's tough. But I think that's the conversation starter, actually. Yeah. So you see the pitch in three minutes, and then you want to follow up with somebody and maybe sit down for a longer conversation later, right? Find out yeah. more about the details of the company. Is it fitting in my vertical? Can I fit it into my portfolio? Things like that. So talk to us about KC Lau. Sure. Yeah, like, um, like yeah. most people mm -hmm. who was not born here, mm -hmm. you followed a twisted path sure. to get to sure. this desk at this time and place. Sure. So. Let's take a simple question. Why are you here? Okay. Why? Yeah. Let's go as deep as you can sure. is in why. Sure. Why are you? Why yeah. is it you? Yeah. And why are you here? Yeah. Sure. Well, okay, so I was born in uh, Vancouver, and my dad was uh, based here in Honolulu when I was a little kid uh, for the airlines. All right, he's not in the military. He uh, works for a commercial for Canadian airlines, mm -hmm. right? So we were based here when we were little kids. So this was... Uh, kind of an interesting time that when you live in Honolulu for a while when you're growing up, you it has a really good impact on your life, I think. So it's funny that after whatever it was, 20 years or so, I'd come back here again um, and have some sort of a career here. Mm -hmm. um, why am I here? It's, I really think that uh, working with Blue Starks and Shanoa Farnsworth and Hank Rogers and this, Maya Rogers doing this uh, here, it's quite exciting, and I think Hawaii does have a lot to offer. And so it, it kind of feels like a full circle in a way. You know, I started off here when I was a little kid, went to Hong Kong and did work there, and now I'm kind of back in Hawaii, and I'm seeing the ecosystem starting to grow here, and I see a lot of opportunity, and I saw a lot of um, 
ability for people to grow businesses out of Hawaii that I think that that's kind of why I'm here right now. Right. I can tell there's some passion behind it. There's a lot where, of passion behind where it. Where does the passion start? When, they, I when guess, you were okay. four and a half years yeah, old. Yeah, it's true. That's a good question. Why is somebody like, so interested in helping companies yeah. rather than like a charity or something? I guess I've always been like this. You know, when I was younger, I've always wanted to do my own business. I wanted to sell things myself to other people. I wanted to publish my own magazines, my own comic books, things like that. So I've always had that kind of entrepreneurial feeling. And so as I started doing my own business, I had other people, other mentors kind of help me grow. And so kind of, I don't know if you're going to call it paying it forward, but the idea is that I feel like I have all this knowledge and I feel like it'd be waste if I didn't actually apply it to other companies who are starting off in an early stage and don't have the same kind of knowledge that I do. So I think that's good. And plus, I have a giant network of friends who are also successful entrepreneurs or investors or even just people in the accounting field, the law field that can apply their uh, knowledge to these new young companies, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to stay relevant. Everybody wants to be stay and see what the next good trends are, right? What's going on? What's happening? Everybody has kids that are also going to be into this kind of world. So I think it just it just kind of feeds off each other. And I find that I'm very excited that I'm you know I chose like technology as a as a path to go through because it's always changing. You know, iPhones and old MacBooks and all these crazy things that are coming out, and AR and VR and AI and all these crazy terms. Of course, everything is technology these Everything's days. technology, yeah, exactly. Even if you're talking about old line industries like mining or agriculture or fishing, there are high-tech angles they to must. all of them. I, I, believe in, I believe strongly in innovate or die kind of thing, right? Because we see a lot of major companies going down because they're not in, keeping up with innovation, what the customers want. And that's kind of what we teach at startups in a startup world, is mm. to you know, find the value proposition <clears throat> to your customer as soon as possible. Because something that you think is great, nobody else might think is great, right? But maybe something that you think is not great, but everybody wants it, that's when you get on so top of it. So what's the payoff for Casey? What's the ideal uh, aha moment for you yeah. out of all of this that you're looking for? Um, I guess I'd like to just be able to, um, you know, I think everybody needs to contribute to the world, and I think this is kind of my contribution. I think that giving back and helping the next generation get to the next level I think is very important. So a lot of companies I've helped in Hong Kong I feel really happy about. I don't necessarily maybe have taken financial reward from these people, but I feel like growing that ecosystem to a level where people are like, wow, you know, this is it's built quite a bit of time over five, six years. I find that building that, I think I feel like I'm a builder. Maybe in a past life I was some sort of hmm. architect or builder or something like that, but today I like building like these more like companies and people and helping hmm. people grow. So that's so are you doing a similar thing in Hong Kong? Because you're kind of commuting back yeah, and forth. Yeah. You spend a few months in one place sure, sure. and a few months in another place. Yeah. And you must be meeting some very interesting oh, people yeah, from definitely. the crossroads of Asia in yeah. Hong Kong. And everybody wants to get on the tech train for yeah. sure, right? And everybody now wants to come to Hawaii. And right? everyone's coming to Hawaii, exactly. <laughs> so I also host a conference in Hong Kong called Rise. Uh -huh. And it is now the biggest conference in Asia for startups and innovation. Right. And in July, we'll have 15,000 people come to Hong Kong for this, with speakers from all over the world, startups from all over the world coming together and enjoying Hong Kong, but also enjoying the programming that we're putting together. Wow. I know, it's very exciting, right? Yeah. And still, I'm, I'm East meets West myself, right? My dad yes. is Chinese, my mom is from England, right. and I'm running around Asia Pacific, so it's pretty... Uh, How's your Chinese? Um, it's not so good. You can blame my father for that. I hope he's watching that, and he knows he's responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put a bookmark in it right there, sure. and we'll be right back. Okay. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come back. To God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master. Don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself to you. Welcome back to The Art of Thinking Smart. We're here with Casey Lau of Blue Startups in Honolulu. And Casey, you used a buzzword back a couple of folds ago, ecosystem. 
I, I know what an ecosystem is in the biological sense. <laughs> yeah. But how can you use ecosystem in this context? It's funny. That's also what I thought when I first heard the word. Dave McClure is a famous investor from Silicon Valley, and he said to us when he came to visit Hong Kong, he said, you guys should get together in a coffee shop and create your own ecosystem. Hmm. And that's the first thing I thought. Like, what does this have to do with science and frogs and things like that, right? Hmm. But actually, he meant that an ecosystem for startups, at least, is that you have all the different pillars of a startup culture together in one space. So that includes the startups, the entrepreneurs, founders. You've got the investors. Mm. You've got government. Mm. You've got media. Mm. And you've got maybe even you know different kinds of associations involved. So anyone who can help to grow some it. Facilities, facilities, a little bit of money. Yeah, some mentors. Yeah, yeah everybody put together that so wants to see your city grow. They all come together in an yeah. organic whole. So Silicon Valley yeah. has done it obviously fantastically, and that's completely organic, right? There's nobody that's saying, "Hey, we're going to start an ecosystem." They just kind of happen. So other cities now have to kind of like drop the stone in the pond and watch the ripples go, right? So right. I was lucky to be able to be one of the guys in Hong Kong to start that. But there's somebody in Singapore doing the same thing. There's somebody in Tokyo doing the same thing. Taipei, Beijing, Shenzhen. There's like all of this. So mm -hmm. I'm finding people like myself that are kind of the, the, the disturbers of the ecosystems or the kind of people bringing it together um, out there. So when I go to places, I want to meet startups. I find that person. That person can connect you into that ecosystem. Like I need right. to meet investors in Shenzhen. I need to meet um, AI startups in Tokyo. There's the people who are uh, who are know who are in the know, and those are the people that are very valuable in the ecosystem. And they yeah. they're not too shy to share those contacts or to do introductions for you. So you're a non-artificial intelligence. Exactly. <laughs> it's good to have all forms. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we have a short video about about Blue Startups. Yeah. I'd like to have a peek at it. Great, now, let's take a look can. at it. Aloha, Blue Startups was founded in 2012 with a mission to stimulate economic growth in Hawaii by providing promising entrepreneurs with seed funding, business development advice, and access to world-class mentors and investors. The founding team of Blue Startups includes Hank and Maya Rogers of the Tetris Company and Shenoa Farnsworth, a local angel and venture investor. As Hawaii's first locally founded technology accelerator, we've been a leading member of Hawaii's burgeoning startup scene since day one, helping to brand Hawaii as startup paradise. Hawaii's geographic and cultural proximity to Asia allows us to easily build relationships with Asia-Pacific business leaders. We host an annual East Meets West conference that attracts hundreds of attendees from around the world. We've developed close strategic partnerships with sil top Silicon Valley accelerators, mentors, and most importantly, investors. During their final week at Blue, cohort participants traveled to Silicon Valley for a week of action-packed networking and events. We are a proud member of the Global Accelerator Network and follow the proven Techstars Accelerator methodology. We have received some amazing results so far. 75% of our portfolio companies successfully raised follow-on funding after the program, and the average raise per company is over $500,000. In 2015, Blue Startups was ranked number 17 among top U.S. accelerators such as AngelPad, Techstars, and 500 Startups. We are now focused on increasing our national and international presence through expanded partnerships in Asia and Silicon Valley. We look forward to building our future together, one startup at a time, from Hawaii to the world. So we're going to drill down into, uh, through Blue Startups, into Casey Lau here. Yeah. Casey. Um, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you were a 20-something, mm -hmm. and if you could talk to that young Casey, who probably knew everything there was to know, had everything together, was straight ahead and you know far smarter than all the older people around sure. you, sure. Um, if you could speak to him now from your lofty perch, yeah. um, what would you tell him, both positive or as a guidance, what would you say to that Casey? I would tell, probably tell him to buy a lot of Apple stock. That's probably the number one thing. I was using Apple back then. I mean, my, my dad yeah. bought me the first Apple like two computers, so we had that. Yeah. So I'm thinking, hmm, that's kind of <laughs> weird. I think that somebody did a somebody did a website study. Like if you bought a Macintosh computer in 1995, mm. and, and instead of buying that and putting that money into Apple stock, it would be huge today. Like yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> um, but that's definitely one of the things. But I guess so. One of the things I, I always think about is that. You know, my life took a quite a, a, it's like a big fork in the road, right? I was raised in Vancouver, went to school there, and I could have stayed there or, or, I, or I could have gone to Hong Kong, right? Mm -hmm. That was the thing. I kind of went to Hong Kong because um, there was more opportunities there, and I had family there, so I went there. 
and uh, basically I had to look for a job for in two weeks. And on the last day before I had to go back, I got hired. Hmm. So I always think about that kind of thing. What if I didn't get a job? What if I went back to Canada? Would hmm. I have been doing this in Canada, or would I? What would I also what would I be doing? It's Must quite have been intimidating, though. Yeah, I mean, you get to a city of 20, 25 million people, yes. and you grew up in a city of two, yeah. two and a half million people. Yeah, exactly. Um, just the scale and the yeah. speed and the density and sure. so on are sure. entirely different. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but I think it was a good move, and uh, I've enjoyed it, and I've got a lot of opportunities that I don't think I would have got. Uh, necessarily um, out of Vancouver. I go back to Vancouver now and I see their star of scene is huge now. They have mm. a big conference there. Ted is there. Mm. It's very exciting. Everybody who's ever, ever, I tell people I'm from Vancouver, they always say, oh, I love Vancouver so much, right? Mm. So it's, great. it's a great place. So I'm very fortunate. I've lived in like Vancouver, Honolulu, Hong Kong, you know, Tokyo, these kind of places. It's very exciting. So I don't know. To, to say something bad, I don't know. It just seems like everything is just happening the way it's happening. And I'm, you know, I can't say there's any regrets there. You wouldn't tell Casey not to do anything. Did hmm, he yeah, make any big yeah. mistakes over the last umpty ump years? <laughs> I'm sure there's been a lot of mistakes, but I, I, that's the other thing about what we do in startups is that we embrace, I think, failure. I think that's one of the things that we um, do teach that you need to, if you're going to fail, you need to fail fast and then get up and keep going. Mm -hmm. You can't let failure cripple you so much. And I think just from my, I guess, my own personality, I feel that to be very true. Right? So I don't think that anything that's happened that's negative has been so bad that it hasn't taught me a lesson. And mm -hmm. that's what you do in startups, right? You kind of like learn that, okay, this doesn't work, but if you'd done it this way, it might have worked better. And I think that's always how life should be taken, and I think that's how I think of it as well. So what makes you effective on a personal level? Obviously, you have an intense working schedule, yes. and you're back and forth, and you're straddling time zones and languages and cultures all wow, the time yeah. is it could be very stressful yeah so right? don't don't say that right that's what i don't think about those things <laughs> what you just said i just think it's like just go straight right you start okay, thinking about is, all these other things is that one yes, of the keys you're right. then is stay in the now stay in the now stay in the zone yeah um, yeah. And then, you know, get, I, I use a lot of technology to get my, make sure my day is correct. Like, if, I don't think if I had, you know, the computer systems I use and my iPhone and stuff like that, I think it would be a, quite a bit yeah. more challenging than um, it is. So I'm, I'm not sure how people did it before the iPhone, right? I mean, I even try to think back myself, like, how did I get, how did I find my way from one part of town to the other? Like, with a map? <laughs> that's, with a paper map? That seems crazy, right? So it's a lot of these things. So I sometimes think, it's in your head. You actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? So, um, and even how do you learn a language, right? Now you can mm. have somebody teach you a language on your phone that's from the country, right? Back then, you'd have maybe somebody who was in your city teach you, or you'd read it from a book, right. or you did it in school or whatever, right? So I think that we have a lot of opportunities today, and I think the, the young people today who are coming into the workforce now have so much opportunity and so many things that they they jump. They basically jump a lot of mm. learning that we had to go through, and they can go faster, and they can do more. So I think that the, the rise in speed of technology will be quite, quite high in the next 10 so years. So what's your key to dealing effectively with people, especially young, high-energy people? It takes some talent to be able to channel their energy into productive yeah, sure. ways yeah. and to get them moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your key to dealing with good, with talented people? I think the best thing to do is try to talk to them on their level. I think that's the best thing. If you're teaching, it's like, it's like my dad, right? He always tells me, don't do this because it will hurt you. But I'm like, but I'm gonna, I have to do it myself, right? You can't tell me like that, right? You, I think you have to learn it your way. So I think guiding people in a certain way that they can see the, they can see the outcome themselves, but they're not sure. But they're willing to be able to try. They don't have to be told, "Don't do it." Then they're going to do it for sure, right? Right. So I think that's that's a that's a definitely a point I learned um, how not to take care of people from the way my dad taught me things growing up, right? Sure, right. there's love involved and things like that, but it's more like you know you've got to burn your hand on the hot kettle to know that it's hot. You're not supposed to do that, right? Yeah. And I think that kind of. In business sense, it's the same kind of thing. Like you're going to make a decision, you're going to put a thousand dollars on a Facebook ad campaign that may be completely wrong, but you're going to have to blow that cash just to mm, see mm. that it works or doesn't work, right? So I think that, and it's not going to hurt you physically. So it's more, yeah. and also just talking to people in the terms like I also think that people give mentoring skills to companies they know nothing about, or it's not in their vertical or not in their space, and they try to teach like I'm from. In manufacturing, I'm going to teach a company that's developing AI, you know, how I did it, right? So I think that's very difficult. You have to understand both sides, and I think both sides have to learn from each other. So that's what I do as well. Like, there's a lot of co um, startups in the cohort that I think, how can I help this company? I have no idea about what they're doing. But I find out that they 
need things that I am very strong at, right? They don't need help on that. So it's very interesting. It's a, it's a it win-win. So that's yeah. why I feel good about doing it. It's not like I'm telling you I'm like your teacher. It's not like that. It's actually a back and forth. Well, in an Asian family, a part Asian family, part Asian family. your dad is Chinese. Yes, yes. A big thing for a young man to do is to prove his value to his father. Yes. That's a traditional <laughs> cultural thing that's yes. very profound. Yeah. And it's baked into you from the youngest age. Mm -hmm. You think your dad is pleased with how you're doing? Um, I think he wanted me to be a tennis player, like a <laughs> famous tennis player. Um, so I think I let him down on that. And then I have a brother, and he was going to be the famous tennis player in the family, but he didn't well, do it either. kind of a tennis player. Yeah, exactly. Right? I feel like I'm ping-ponging at least between the world, around the world, or yeah. tennis balling around the world. Um, so, but I, I think that as long as I'm healthy and happy and enjoy what I'm doing, I think he's, I think he's happy. And so, your mom's good. Mom's good, too, yeah. She loves yeah. Hawaii, too, so she likes to pop over here She's a she Canadian, can. so she loves to come here anyway. Of anyways. course, of course, yeah. 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 So what's your favorite uh, Blue Startups company? You mentioned Volta. Tell us a 30-second sure. description of Volta. So Volta is very, a very interesting company, I think. Um, I don't want to say it's my favorite company. I don't, I don't know them that well, but they're one of the early ones in the Blue Star program. And we went to see their office in San Francisco just recently. And it's quite an amazing company. So what they've done is they set up uh, chargers for electric cars in mm -hmm. shopping malls. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, you probably see them in Kahala Mall mm -hmm. and Ala Moana, things like that. And because that Hawaii had a law where you had to have a, a charging station in your mall parking lot, right. and so they they came here and took advantage of that and started putting them in front of all these kind of like Whole Foods and these kind of upper scale stores with advertising. So it's free mm -hmm. for the user, free for the mall, and they make their money off advertising on it, and it's growing crazily in, in the mainland right now, which is great because electric cars are taking off. So you, you know, if you came to me with that so it's idea, it's doing well nationally. It's doing now, it's growing quite well. But if you came to me five years ago before this, like Teslas and stuff that came out, and said, "Do you know this is going to be the next big thing?" You'd have to like really believe in it, right? That this is going to mm -hmm. be the next big thing, and then that Hawaii was the place we were going to launch something like this. Okay, we're going to put a bookmark in it for now. Okay, Casey, maybe you can come back another time. I have a lot to say, um, obviously, I yeah, talk about around. specific okay. events and specific specific companies, sure. a specific technology that really grabs you. Yeah. And I know we're going to have Chinoa come in. Yes. So we'll be hearing more about Blue Startups here Definitely. at Excellent. Think Tech. Thank you, Michael. I want to thank you for your time, Casey Lau, and for Think Tech Hawaii and the art of thinking smart. Aloha.